What's going on guys? I'm on one after this conversation I just had with a Lyft passenger. You know, um, I know I'm probably going to get a bad rating. I know he's probably going to report me because he was a raging white liberal male, of course, um, and beta male. Um, and I'm like trying to explain to this guy, I'm like, I'm not the one, dude. Because he gets in the car complaining about how bad downtown is with the streets because of them. Um, LA downtown, they're building all kinds of new high rises, whatever. And I'm like, that's growth. I mean, that's going to build on the economy in LA. Why wouldn't you want that? He's like, well, that ain't it because they don't put the money in the right places. You know, they don't spend properly. You know, they're spending all this money on cops and not on this and that and this and that. And I have to stop. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, you do realize that, you know, my son came down here. I've only been in LA for like a year. My son came down for three weeks. And you realize both times that we saw um, somebody stealing from a store, you know, I'm talking about the first time was a guy walking out with a hamper full of clothes from Ross. Then a second time was some kids stealing from like a store. You realize both times were um, by black guys. And I'm like, I was so ashamed because, you know, my son, I didn't want that negative stereotype being put out there that you know we're out here just stealing and robbing and all that but it's what it is and i'm like the reason why i'm telling you this right now is because that's something that cops are battling right now but you have an issue with the race race and all that crap with cops being out here shooting black guys and that narrative being put out here which in some instances is true but it's not as bad as it was at one point and i'm not justifying the past but because of that stigma Cops are not able to do their job. So now people are robbing and killing each other and nobody's there to save anybody because of the fact we have people pandering against cops, pandering against the ideas to try to keep cops from being able to do their job. So after I go on in that spiel, he starts, and then I realize he's a liberal, because he starts saying, dude, you're so wrong. You gotta understand. You know, you walking down the street and the cop tries to arrest you and if you pull your cell phone out, you're getting shot. Like that happens every day. And I'm like, dude, like why? I'm like, you realize we just walked, we just uh, drove past um, like a hundred cop cars. Like for some reason they had like a block party or something for cops, I don't know. And I'm like, I would rather be at this block party kicking it with the cops for a whole day than be in a hood in LA for a day. I'm probably gonna end up dead or robbed in that hood. But if I'm with the cops, I'm good. I'm gonna be chilling. Like, come on, dude, use common sense. If you ain't doing nothing wrong, they're not messing with you. Now I get in in LA, it used to be bad back in like, you know, the 90s and the 2000s, even in the late 2000s, you know, or let's say early 2010s, it used to be bad. But it ain't like that no more. If you're not doing nothing, it ain't, nothing ain't happening to you. But he actually said that this white guy, this guy that looks like he would freaking get carjacked for no reason, he tried to say he would rather be in the hood because he would even probably get shot by the cops. I'm like, dude, but that's the problem. And I hit him with the, we're so far away from what, you know, we, we, we push as godly, okay? Because then he goes into the whole no cash bail. We get into that after he talks about cops not being funded. I'm like, cops need to be more funded. You know, you know how long it takes to get a cop to show up if somebody robs you? Somebody broke into my car or stole my uh, cat catalytic converter and you know, it took me like a day to finally get the cops to like come and then, then when they were on their way, I guess they got a call because when I called back to see where they were at, they told me I just gotta do a report over the phone or, or on the internet. And I'm like, bruh, we need more cops out here in LA. But he goes into no cash bail. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, see, that's the problem right there. You guys are capping, you're so hard on trying to make it okay to be a criminal. I'm like, I apologize. I don't know if you do criminal stuff, but I'm sorry. Like, if a guy is habitual, going to Walgreens and stealing stuff, he deserves a bail. But he has to pay that bail. But no cash bail? No. Like, he, like that's going to allow people to continue committing crime over and over again. No consequences because they don't got to put addresses down. They don't got to put addresses down. They can say they're homeless. And they don't got to show up to court. And that's the point. With no cash bail, you can literally not show up. And when you get arrested again, they give you another no cash bail, you know? And I'm like, it's to the point that you can go and shoot somebody and get no cash bail. I'm like, no, we need law and order. And that's the problem with California, the reason why it's so bad and it's getting worse, more worse, and worse by the year. So then, you know, we're going back and forth. 
And then he starts talking about, uh, he, he started to try to go into the Trump, but I'm like, nah, I'm not even going to go there because he'll literally report me to Lyft. So I just kept it like, I go back into the whole, um, you know, um, black privilege situation. I'm like, look, you know, this is the problem. Because he tried to say that. I'm like, look, I don't want nobody telling me that I got to worry about cops. Like the white man is the reason why I'm not where I want to be. I don't want to hear none of that. Because you know what? My son, I don't tell him none of that. Because in 2023, nobody can hold my son back other than his than, than him. Not doing good in school. Not not working. Not contributing to society. He is, 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 is in control of his own life. But if I tell him that this white man, this, this white devil is the reason why he's gonna be held back and not gonna be financially there, um, gonna be broke. I think that's what it's gonna cost my son to slack off, be lazy, and just think I'm not gonna make it anyway. So I'm like, I would never share that opinion with my son. And I'm like, that's ignorant. I'm like, that's the reason why I'm where I'm at. Because, you know, before inheriting all this money I inherited, I thought that I was never gonna have the house with the picket fence with the dog in the front yard married with two kids. Actually, I wanted three kids. Because of the fact I was told my whole life that you know the white man holds you back you can get shot by the cops if you do something that they think you did wrong like all these th these things that are just not happening i thought they would happen i never thought that i could do anything i didn't see myself as you know a person that had value anything to offer so guess what i did i just worked like a like literally a slave and we got it at that point too because he tried to go into you know what cops were um you know what what, what created what why crop cops were created and i'm like Oh, God, man, I don't even go down there. I'm like, dude, like, bruh, come on now. Like, I'm like, first off, okay, yes, I get it. They were made to round up slaves. But I'm like, f for white slave owners, I said, oh, you do realize there are black slave owners. You do realize that one of the first slave owners was black. So I'm like, let's get off that point. And I go back into, that's the problem. You guys push these ideas on black people, black Americans. And guess what? We're doing the worst because we're thinking we're under the eight ball right out the womb. But then you got Asians, you got Hispanics, you got other minorities, maybe not here. My, um, um, Hispanics aren't really a minority here, but in every other place, um, um, Hispanics are minorities, okay? Asians are minorities, Indians are minorities, and guess what they're doing? Native Africans, minorities. And guess what they're doing? Kicking butt because of the fact they're not allowing these American ideas to be put in their head that if you're not white, you're not right. You're not going to make it if you're not white. And guess what we do as black folks? We allow white folks to tell us that we can't do anything unless they give the go-ahead to do it. So I told the guy, I'm like, look, man. I'm like, I'm not going to put that on my son. And I'm like, I actually have more white privilege. Or I didn't say white privilege. I said I have black privilege, which was better than white privilege because I inherited a million dollars. And I said, guess what I did? I fumbled the million dollars. He literally gave it away. I, I tried to do what was right by my family and everybody, but I, for the most part, gave that money away. And I said that that was on me. I made that mistake. And guess what I did? For like a few years until I moved to Las Vegas, I blamed everybody else. I blamed the government. I blamed white men. I blamed, even though this white guy that stole $82,000 from me um, that I had put towards this um, semi-pro team, but that's on another story. But I, I told him, I'm like, I said all these, you know, these people are the reason why I'm broke instead of me. I didn't have to spend another money. I could have lived in the house I had and just worked the day job just to pay my, my um, utilities. I would have been good. But instead, I fumbled the bag. That was on me, nobody else. But I'm like, because of me having everybody around me telling me that it was the white man's fault or, or the way that America's set up, we're not set up to have money and this stupid crap, I felt bad for myself, sorry for myself for years. So I moved to Las Vegas and I had a couple black men come in my life uh, from just doing ride share, gig work, like like just having conversations like, dude, pull yourself up by the bootstrap. Stop complaining, stop crying. I did it. I'm a lawyer. I'm an investment guy. I'm this, I'm that. All these successful guys, I never saw successful guys when I was in Youngstown. I'm talking about a next level of success. My grandfather was the only successful guy, but when I got aware as a you know young adult, um, they laid him off, you know, like a lot of people with the steel mills. But other than him, everybody that was successful was drug dealers in my life. So I moved to Las Vegas and actually saw black doctors, black lawyers, black people winning, black excellence. It changed my whole life, you know? So I'm like, I don't want to hear that whole, like, if white people aren't telling us or giving us the avenue to succeed. I'm like, that's, that's racism. That's racism, literally. Like, you don't hate me, but you're literally, you think that you're better than me because of your skin color. And then he's like, after going on a little rant, like, it wasn't straight rant because he was rebutting and, you know, we're going back and forth. 
But at that point, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm like, you got it. You got me. And he got out of my car. And he shut the door real hard, even though he said, nice conversation, but I know he's mad. Because I just don't understand these liberals. And I'm going to continue giving them smoke because you know what? I'm sorry. Stop pushing out on minorities. Stop pushing out on black people. Like, they don't tell. I'm like, I bet you anybody, you don't tell your son or your, your grandkids that they can't make it in life because of somebody holding them back. You don't tell them that. But you're quick to tell me as a black man. You're quick to coddle me. Like, if I told you I had a criminal record, because he tried to, like, sympathize for, like, me if I had, like, he insinuated, like, I had a criminal record. Then he's like, you know, like, if you've got a criminal record, I don't know if you do or not, but if you got a criminal record, I don't think you should, you know, get out of jail and, and you know, not get money to, to have a better life for yourself because, you know, you get out of jail, bro. I'm like, what do white people, what happened to white people when they got out of jail? Do they get money? I'm like, no. Nobody gets money when I get a jail, when they get out of jail. I think that they should do a better job giving people, putting people in programs to earn money out of after to get out of jail due to the fact that you know most people that get out of jail with nothing are going to go back to doing the same crime that they're in jail for. So after going in, you know, with that guy, he gets out of the car, and then, you know, I'm like, I gotta do a video on this. And I know this video is all over the place, but this guy, I didn't even take my energy drink today, and he got me on one because. For the life of me, when are we going to get to the point in this country that white people like him who are literally liberals um, and they're in power out here in, in most places that are like black majority, like most places that are like majority black are liberal democratic places. These are the people that are making policy. These are the people that are setting up these programs. They're setting up black people to continue being poor, continue being the worst off financially as a whole. They're the ones putting this stuff together because they're not giving people who are law-abiding, do the right thing, rock work ethic, trying to grind, trying to just be great. They're not giving them anything. They're only pushing things for people that choose not to work, who choose to do crime to feed their family. Like, he literally said that. Like, you know, people don't steal because they just want to steal. They steal because... You know, they want to feed their family. I'm like, okay, so if that's the case, why aren't they still in that Barnes Noble? Why is all the Barnes Noble in this country, there hasn't been one burnt up? You know why? Because nobody truly cares. Because if you go to Barnes Noble, you can get some books that educate you on a few things. Those books are expensive, but nobody's looking, nobody's checking for Barnes Noble. Bookstores are, are unscathed. They're freaking great. They don't get burnt up. They don't get looted. They don't get nothing. So why do you have shoe stores and all those other stores that are looted? Because people, they go for things that they can potentially wear, but potentially sell. And I get that. But guess what? It gets to a point that you get that item, you sell that item, you're going to get that little quick fix. Why not go to work and earn your money and you're going to have a guaranteed fix? You know, um, I, don't, I just don't get it. And you know, I do things. Like, like sports betting in California is illegal. I get it, and if I got if I got caught doing it, I'm gonna do the time, and I'm gonna do it to spy on my face because I did the crime. Now, if I got framed for doing it, I wasn't doing it, then yeah, I'd be mad. But if I did it, I'll do it. I'll do the time. If I more likely I won't have time because I don't have no criminal record. I've never been arrested before, other than for driving with no insurance, but that was dropped, take, completely taken off my record. But the whole point of that matter is this: I knew I was gonna have to deal with this in California. But this is my first experience with a white person that tried to tell me how it feels to be black. Like, because I don't fit the narrative, because I didn't tell this guy and allow this guy to call me a victim, he felt like he was more black than me. Like, he could speak on what black people are going through. I can't speak on what black people are going through because guess what? We're not a monolith. We're not one thing. We're multiple things, just like white people. Like, I might generalize people, but I know that there's different people. Like, I don't say all white people do this. All Indian people do this. All black people do this. I say a lot of us do this. A lot of us do that. You know, and then if a majority of people do, like for example, majority of kids are growing up in single mother households, okay? Right now in America. Majority of black kids grew up, grew up in majority um, you know, single mother households. So when I talk, you know, about the fact that, you know, nine times out of ten, you ain't got a dad, like, in the household, you can't be mad because that's statistically true. It actually be seven to 10 um, chance of you growing up without a father. And that's a, a crazy, disgusting stat you face, you know? 
And you know, I gotta give my I give my child's mom all the credit in the world. You know, my son's mom. She kept a man in the household no matter what. You know, even if she, you know, moved on to somebody else, whenever, um, she still kept a man in the household, you know, a husband. She hasn't she's married. She did what she had to do. She was smart in regards to that, because she knows that you need a man in that household. She's like you need a woman in the household. You know, but those things that literally create success seems like we're just not pushing them anymore in America. But I don't know. I'm sorry guys going on this long rant, but I had to get this out because I'm just tired of the you know the pandering to me just because I'm black, making me feel like I'm less than just because of my skin color when I could be as great as you. I just gotta push and do it. But for now, appreciate you guys tuning in. If you like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. That's all I got for now. I'm out. Peace.